These are really shameful and ridiculous times in Canada under the administration of Justin Trudeau's liberal government, and you can hardly finish mentioning the atrocities of this current government of Canada. You know, I bet even the liberals' followers never really thought the state of the country could get this worse. First, it was this World Economic Forum globalists pleasing liberals trying to force everyone to take a series of vaccines that has reportedly been having very dangerous side effects, and now, these guys are attempting to sabotage the food supply across the country. Apparently, Justin Trudeau would continue to steal away and mercilessly put a roof over the freedom of the people of Canada, destroying our quality of life, and now in a rather horrific manner, this guy is going to implement his crazy plans aimed at reducing food production in Canada. And you know, it's just really insane. I mean, just how exactly did we get to this point in Justin Trudeau's Canada? As a member of the G7, Canadian provinces apparently are expected to be great cities, but in a rather insane and ironic manner, Canada now has its major airport tagged as the world's worst. And there are the Trudeau liberals who, of course, should be great custodians of a great country that Canada is supposed to be still buying chairs for citizens waiting for passports in a seemingly never-ending queue, rather than efficiently devising a means to issue the citizens their passports. And what's rather more painful is that Justin Trudeau, in the face of all this mess, has been flying around the country like a deranged bird from one place to another. But of course, it's yet again not really surprising. I mean, he's obviously not feeling the pains and frustrations that the majority of Canadian travelers are facing at the airports due to his status. And on another side, there are the probings into possible interference of Justin Trudeau and his liberal gangs in the famous Nova Scotia mass murder police investigation, as well as the illegal invocation of the Emergencies Act, which apparently has been endlessly frustrated with several Trudeau liberals' political theatrics. At the same time, there is the historically high inflationary spiral that's being worsened with the increase in fuel costs and gas prices due to how the liberals have doubled down on their ridiculous carbon tax. It's evident that Justin Trudeau has also been stifling the development of the Canadian energy sector for years, and at this point, farming could be the next he's coming for. You know, it always seems unbelievable until you realize that it's intentional. Of course, with Justin Trudeau aiming to be in the good books of the Davos big boys and communist globalist fanatics who think that the world is overpopulated. It isn't surprising that the liberals are pushing the narrative that the final solution to that problem is to cause famine intentionally and sneaking in their insane agenda using climate alarmism and environmentalism. The liberals are hell-bent on attacking the essentials of life such as food and energy in Canada when on the other hand, they've also woefully failed at the welfare and security of the citizens. And it begs the question, just in what aspect has the Trudeau Liberal government really been of convincing benefit to Canadians? But of course, there's a lot to discuss in today's video, so please watch this video till the very end. You're welcome to Front Page News, a channel dedicated to bringing you the latest news update without the ill-concealed and abundant hypocrisy of the left-wing and mainstream media. Please ensure to support our channel so we can reach out to more people out there by subscribing and sharing this video and our other videos with others. Give thumbs up to this video as well, and you should also consider turning on your post notifications so you never miss out on any of our regular video updates. So here's what's happening. Despite targeting the oil and gas industry, the Canadian federal government will now also cut emissions from fertilizer usage by 30%. Apparently, this is aimed at reducing greenhouse gas emissions from fertilizer use by 30% as part of Justin Trudeau's overall effort to reduce Canada's emissions by 40 to 45% within the next eight years. I know we find that crazy too right, it appears Justin Trudeau would rather watch the majority of Canadians starve to death than go against his World Economic Forum master's Great Reset agenda that allegedly needs to be hastened up. You know, just imagine the severe hurt that the climate scaremongering has caused the oil and gas industry in Canada over the crazy years of Justin Trudeau's administration in relation to the significant current global demand for energy supplies due to the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. If only Justin Trudeau had not frustrated and strangulated the working life out of the Canadian energy industry. Canada would most probably have been able to be of tremendous assistance to the European countries at this moment and might have taken over the Russian energy supply monopoly. But it's just really frustrating and saddening as the Trudeau Liberals keep crashing a sector that could be of so much value and increase the leverage of Canada as a country in international politics and a foreign market. Apparently, Justin Trudeau has shown everyone that he's so obsessed with Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum and the Great Reset that he can go as far as stifling the valuable natural resources of Canada for their selfish globalist mandates. And that's, of course, one of the primary roots of Canadians' problems. Justin Trudeau has become attached to this insane globalist ideology that his obsessed yearning to be part of the communist Great Global Reset had led him to make life hellish for the people of Canada, and with each passing day, this guy cares less about his own country and citizens. And it's just really crazy. 
But apparently, Justin Trudeau was probably telling us those were only the tip of the icebergs compared to what's to come. And here is actually where it gets completely alarming and horrifying and a sad reality that things could get really worse until Canadians see this crazy guy step down from public service. It would be shocking and disheartening to know that, just like the oil and gas sector, Justin Trudeau is coming to attack the Canadian agricultural industry. Arguably, it's evident that agriculture in Canada, especially modern agriculture, has been an enviable achievement, an achievement that has been continued over the years by great and hardworking Canadian farmers. And one would have thought that the agricultural industry would escape the notice and attack of Justin Trudeau and his globalist pleasing liberal gangs, but of course, no. These guys would see to their ridiculous agenda, even if it means the rest of us are going to die of starvation. You would recall that Dutch farmers in the Netherlands have been on a massive protest because of Mark Rutte's globalist pleasing government's harsh and severe fertilizer reduction policies, among other crazy world economic forum globalist agenda being furthered which have evidently caused an uproar in the country. In the same vein, agricultural sector workers are protesting similar insane policies in Sri Lanka, and the same is happening in Ireland. The farmers condemning the government's plan to enforce a 21 to 30 percent cut in emissions from the agricultural industry. And just when everyone thought that such would never happen in Canada and a day like this would never come where the Liberal government decides to attack the Canadian food industry. The Liberal government apparently gave out a notice to farmers and ranchers to cut back their emissions in its aim to allegedly reduce Canada's emission by up to 45 percent in the next eight years marked as the deadline for the Davos elite's ridiculous Great Reset. You know, at this point in Canada, it's just really crazy with Trudeau's Liberal government. Despite how glaring it is that nothing absolutely is going right, which is really devastating for a country with valuable potential, such as Canada. It's just so insane that Justin Trudeau would rather remain unconcerned about that, remaining detached and out of touch with the majority of Canadians while doubling down and attacking an arguably the most vital sector in the country just to further his obsession with the narcissistic communist globalist Davos elite's climate alarmism and ridiculous mandates. Meanwhile, Agriculture Minister David Merritt in Saskatchewan had argued that the new agricultural policy of the Trudeau government is arbitrary and really concerning. In his words, the Trudeau government has apparently moved on from their attack on the oil and gas industry and has set their sights on Saskatchewan farmers. So, in other words, the Trudeau liberal government keeps attacking not only the sectors that produce energy but also Canadians' natural food source. Apparently, the two pivotal and indispensable needs of life are being sabotaged already by Justin Trudeau just to please his globalist masters. And it could get worse if this guy doesn't step down at this point. That's all I've got for you in today's video. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, let me know your opinion about this in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and see you in my next video.